the sooner we'll all be finished. Now, um, <laughs> ah, yes, please welcome someone um, of whom I've been a huge fan ever since I Googled him 10 minutes ago. You know, <laughs> music has always played an important part in the life of the Prince of Wales. So much so, I suggest he goes home now. Uh, welcome, <laughs> Mr. Billy Bell. Hello. Hello. Uh, good evening. Bill Bailey. Um, thank you. <laughs> We're living in very tense times. I, I find myself increasingly more tense and mistrustful. <laughs> it's the joggers I don't trust, because they're always the ones that find the bodies, aren't they? Coincidence? I don't think so. I was in the supermarket. I was at one of the new self-service tills. You know the ones with the two extra members of staff hanging around? <laughs> to deal with the slack-jawed Luddites as they pour ineffectually at the screen like a cat when a mouse comes on the TV. <laughs> and suddenly there was this terrifying voice. Unexpected item in the bagging area! <laughs> And it was me. <laughs> I was walking in my street, and um, I get recognised sometimes. People thought, some people thought I was Shakira. And, uh, <laughs> it's the hips. They don't lie. And, uh, two hoodies appeared. They're quite scary, scary, aren't they? Intimidating. One of them said, are you that bloke? And I said, only you can answer that. <laughs> And his mate said, are you that bloke off the TV? And I said, yes. And he said, what are you doing walking around like normal? <laughs> like he thought I should be hovering. So I was a little bit scared, because they were outside my house. I thought I'd better change my doorbell, because uh, I wanted to deter unwanted callers. Most doorbells are quite friendly, aren't they? Well, they're quite nice. Or, you know... Maybe not that one, if you've got an abduction complex. <laughs> And that's actually the Pope's doorbell. <laughs> He's in the Vatican hoping someone's gonna ring. Come on, come on, come on. Who the Pope? And the Pope. Who the Pope? And the Pope. <laughs> My only job I ever had, I had a job, I was very, I was briefly, I was a, a crematorium organist. And uh, it's quite an easy job. You just play one chord and change a note every now and again. In fact, actually, the reason I got fired, I never knew what, quite what to play at the end of, of the ceremony when the curtains go back, and now we commit Edith's body to the flames. <laughs> and then I got a job in a jazz trio. Wow! Think about playing jazz, you can play any kind of chord you like. Nonsense, really. People are going, yeah, nice. Uh, most of jazz sounds like a surrealist car alarm. <laughs> the thing about playing in the jazz trio was I used to get bored, so to stop myself from going insane, I would slip in music that I'd rather be playing surreptitiously. And that, I think, would make a fantastic national anthem, wouldn't it? That'd be great. Imagine the opening ceremony of the Olympics. So out come the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! 
with a cool country. Because <laughs> I always feel sorry for those Eastern European countries at the Olympics, because they've got rotten national anthems, don't they? Here comes Belarus. <laughs> Fighting over a pineapple. <laughs> we don't have pineapple in Belarus. Where did they get it from? <laughs> Come to Belarus, where wild animals will steal your fruit. <laughs> Andrew Bailey, have a great night. <laughs>